Hello friends, in our last class we have studied how best we can use pheromones in pest management. So, now let us uh, discuss the other modifying chemicals which are used in the insect pest management programs. Such one is insect growth regulators. These are synthetic compounds which are actually processing the activities of juvenile and molting hormone of insects which are very important in insect maturation and development. They are called insect growth regulators. These are also called as GH mimics, GH analogs and also juvenides. So, these insect growth regulators they retard the development of pest species particularly inducing its sterility and also ultimately death of the insects. These are mainly effective on immature insects. So, this phenomenon was actually met accidentally when Dr. William he was working with one insect that is a Phyrochoris pug. He, when he was rearing, he come across the mortality of the Phyrochoris bug. So, he afterwards understood that particular chemical is involved in the mortality of these insects. So, when he traced out this paper towel which was actually made out of this balsam fir tree which is available in America contains this JH hormone. Actually that killed the insect and thereby the different insect growth regulators and other juvenides where came into the market. So, these insect growth regulators they affect in different way. So, they act as antimorphic chemicals and mainly they act on larvae, even they act on eggs and ultimately they inhibit the embryogenesis and also egg hatching. So, the insect growth regulators they even inhibit the synthesis of this chitin. You know chitin is one of the important constant of the insect which is uh, which gives protection to the insects many ways. So, thereby it acts on the chitin synthase enzyme and most of the insect growth regulators they act on this uh, cuticle especially this uh, chitin regulator and thereby it is going to rupture the insect and forms the thereby it is going to produce malformation effect on the insect and insect it is going to die because it is not going to reach the further stage. There are many insect growth regulators which are actually available in the market and among them methoprene is first to release as a insect growth regulators which is very effective against homopterans and also dipterans and uh, followed by quinoprene, hydroprene, pyriproxifene and diflobenzuran. So, these are the chemicals which are actually available in other countries only the diflobenzuran which is available in India for the management of various insect pests. The other insect growth regulators which are available in India they are nufenoran which is very effective against lepidopteran pests and to some extent they are also effective against collapton groups of insects. Then biprophagin another uh, insect growth regulators which is very effective against sucking insect pest and also some of the hemipterans uh, which are actually involved in the damage in a rice ecosystem. So, among them is one is PPS. So, it is very effective against this PPS pest and another uh, insect growth regulator which is uh, commercial available that is uh, Nauluran and it is also very effective against this lepidopteran group of insect and to some extent white fly. Okay, these uh, insect growth regulators they have their own uh, advantage and uh, these uh, can be fit well in uh, uh, integrated pest uh, management uh, programs since their requirement is very small. Hence, we are going to load the environment with less pesticides and they are uh, somewhat uh, specific and uh, hence the non-target enemies are spared and they are their mode of action is more than one that is uh, they even affect eggs larvae. 
and uh, to some extent pupa also hence the resistant development to other insecticides or other conventional insecticides can be avoided and these are very eco friendly because of biodegradation is very fast in the nature. At the same time these insect growth relators they have some disadvantages since they are actually effective against only narrow group of insecticides. So, most of the insects cannot be controlled with these uh, insect growth regulators and uh, since they are uh, effective at uh, larval stage and uh, if you are going to apply at a later stage of the larvae they may continue feed on the applied uh, surfaces. Since their mode of action is uh, slow the damage may be continued in the field. So, like other insects the chances of resistance in these growth regulators is not ruled out. They are somewhat unstable in the uh, ecosystem there are some naturally occurring uh, insect growth uh, regulators they are uh, somewhat unstable, but uh, the commercially available insect growth regulators they are somewhat stable hence they are producing very go good effect on the insects. The cost of uh, these uh, insect growth regulators comparatively high than conventional insecticides. So, other method which is natural uh, method of uh, modifying the insect behavior that is uh, push and uh, pull or stimulo deterrent uh, diversion already we have discussed uh, more about uh, this only thing is here volatile chemicals they are produced by the plant they are utilized for the benefit of the insect pest management. There are uh, many attractants, repellents and also deterrents they are also involved in the pest management programs. So, what is attractant? Attractant is one chemical which actually brings oriented movement in insects towards the source of the food. They are also called food lures. There are various uh, attractants which are commercially available for the management of a different uh, insect pests. Among one is that is uh, for the management of housefly we have sugar and molasses likewise uh, melon fruit fly management we have this uh, culure then uh, another uh, fruit fly that is oriental fruit fly for this management we have this uh, methyl vicinal it is uh, much used in the management of this fruit fly. Similar to attractants we have antifidants here antifidant means the surface area will be avoided by the insect from feeding. So, insect can sit on the surface that is a treated surface, but it, it cannot feed. So, the first chemical to release that is uh, uh, zinc salt of dimethyl dithiocarbamic acid which was used against many rodents for the management of uh, the one which actually feeds on the bark of trees. There are various uh, deterrents I mean antifidants they are available from uh, different sources like uh, botanical source then uh, even uh, the from chemical source and also some of the attractants I mean antifidants they are also belong to some other groups like argontins then also triagents which are available in the market for the management of different insect pests. We have few repellents. So, these uh, repellents actually cause insects to orient their movement away from the source. In case of uh, attractants there it actually causes towards the source, but here it actually repels. So, even this repellents can be working as this feeding deterrent. So, after few hours of treatment of these repellents they are going to act as feeding deterrents. How means when you spray these repellents on a particular surface for few hours the insect may not sit, but it would be repelled. But after few hours when it lost the efficacy, so insects can sit on the treated surface but it cannot feed. So, in that way repellent they are also working as this feeding deterrent. So, there are uh, many repellents which are available from uh, different uh, uh, chemicals. So, among one is this uh, benzyl benzoate which is uh, used for uh, 
management of uh, mites. Likewise, other uh, chemicals which are generally used to, for the pest management, they do act as repellents for the management of insect pest. So, another uh, botanical product which is uh, much used in the screwworm uh, flies management that is uh, pine tar oil. Likewise, the commonly used this uh, pentachlorophenol for the management of termites. So, these uh, attractants, repellents and uh, feeding deterrents, they have their own advantages. Since uh, they are used at low toxicity, they are uh, safe to humans, plants and also other domestic animals. So, since they are uh, applied on the desired plants and other uh, insects are spared like uh, natural enemies and uh, chances of resistant development it is low. At the same time, they are possessing some disadvantages. So, we cannot uh, completely cover the entire surface area. So, hence the repeated application is required and uh, if you do not apply in another area, there are chances of movement of these insects from treated place to the another untreated place. So, that is why we need to apply these programs in area wide basis. Thank you.